Hi folks, so today I want to talk about a paper by John Ousterhout. You might recognize the name because he was responsible for the Tickle programming language, which was fairly popular back in the 90s. Recently, he's also authored a book called A Philosophy of Software Design. It's a great book about how you should design software, how you should design abstractions, highly recommended. Coming back to the paper. This paper was written back in 1998, and it argues for why scripting languages will become more and more dominant. This was back when clock speeds were steadily increasing, Moore's law was still in full effect and had not flattened out. In this paper, Ousterhout argues that increases in computer speed and also the nature of applications that are being currently written will make scripting languages more and more popular. He also talks a lot about the differences between scripting languages and so-called system programming languages. Scripting languages and system programming languages are complementary. What are the major differences between them? Their motivations are very different. They are designed for different tasks. Systems programming languages were designed to be very close to the metal, so to speak. They're great for building data structures and algorithms from scratch, and they tend to reason in terms of primitive elements such as words of memory. Scripting languages, on the other hand, are much more higher level in terms of the abstractions they provide to the programmer. And they are, as the author claims here, primarily designed for gluing together components into larger applications. Another big difference is that system programming languages are strongly typed, whereas scripting programming languages are weakly typed. How does this prediction back from 1998 hold up with the world as it is today? I think that scripting languages have moved a lot beyond than just gluing applications together. In domains such as machine learning and data science, Python and R are already quite dominant. So scripting languages have gone far beyond just gluing together applications and have become the first programming language of choice in many new domains since this paper was written. Just to get some concrete examples, here we are classifying languages such as C and C++ and even Java as systems programming languages and languages such as Perl or Tickle as scripting languages. Let's talk about typing, because that is one of the major differences between systems programming languages and scripting languages. In a strongly typed language, we essentially declare how each piece of information will be used, and that is enforced by the compiler and the language. In weakly typed languages, there is no such restriction. Now note that a language being weakly typed does not mean that it is untyped. The types are still there. They are only enforced at runtime rather than compile time. Now, strong versus weak typing is one of the oldest debates in computer science, and I'm not going to get into that right now. The author does concede that typing has several advantages. First of all, it makes large programs much more manageable and much easier to understand. It also makes it easier for the tooling, such as IDEs, to suggest things by their types. Compilers can catch a ton of errors, and obviously we can generate much faster code if we know the types of things. What are scripting languages primarily used for? Here the author claims that scripting languages Assume that a basic collection of useful components already exists. And the purpose of a scripting language is to basically combine these existing components. They are not meant to be used for writing complex algorithms and data structures from scratch. And scripting languages are usually typeless. Now here the author claims that typeless languages make it much easier to hook together components because they reduce the restrictions in how things can be hooked together. The example he gives is that of the Unix shell, where you can pipe the output of one command into the input of another command, 
And this sort of thing would be much more cumbersome, if not impossible, to do in an interactive manner if this was a typed language. He claims that the strongly typed nature of systems programming languages discourages reuse and makes interfaces too brittle and incompatible with each other. Here's an example of how a very simple Hello World GUI app would work in a scripting language like Tickle versus in C++ using the Microsoft Foundation classes. Now, I do think that Ousterhout might be a little too hard on strongly typed languages because the trend we are beginning to see now is that of gradual typing where people have been trying to impose type systems even on untyped scripting languages. The most relevant example of this today is TypeScript, which tries to add typing on top of JavaScript. Another big trend we're seeing is that of systems programming languages raising their level of abstraction and decreasing their level of verbosity. So on the one hand, we see scripting languages trying to become more robust by adding typing, and we see systems programming languages trying to raise their level of abstraction. For example, Java 8 has things like streaming APIs, Lambda functions, optional parameters, which makes code much more succinct than before. Code such as this cannot necessarily be pinned on just strong typing. This is also about good API design and sensible defaults, whether or not your program is strongly typed. Another major difference is that scripting languages are almost always interpreted, whereas systems languages are compiled. This obviously makes scripting languages much less efficient than system programming languages. To balance that though, the author argues that the performance of scripting languages is usually not a major issue because you wouldn't write performance critical code in a scripting language anyway. The performance tends to be dominated by the underlying components that the scripting language is gluing together. Also, they tend to do much more work per line of code. It is this higher level nature that allows much more rapid development of applications using scripting languages. We always have to remember that systems and scripting programming languages are complementary and they're meant for different tasks. Now, ideally, we would not use scripting languages for performance critical code, but in practice, it does not always work out that way. There have been huge apps that have been written in scripting programming languages. Two famous examples from recent memory are YouTube, which was initially written in Python, and also Dropbox, which was initially written in Python. They both outgrew Python and had to be re-implemented in more efficient languages. Also, take a look at this clip from the recent Turing Award lecture by Hennessy and Patterson, which talks about the overhead of scripting languages. Maurice Wilk said to me about 25 years ago, I said, Maurice, what happens if Moore's law ever slows down? And he says, then we're gonna have to think a lot more carefully about how we write our software and pay a lot more attention to efficiency. So we've got software-centric opportunities, right? We all write in these modern scripting languages. They're interpreted, they're dynamically typed, they encourage reuse, they give lots of power, but they run terribly. They are incredibly inefficient. Great for programmers, bad for execution. So here's a great uh, chart that's out of a paper called There's Plenty of Room at the Top uh, by Lyserson and a group of colleagues at MIT. And it looks at a simple example, admittedly a simple example, matrix multiply. So we'll take the version in Python. How much faster does the version just rewritten in C run? 47 times faster. Then, then you take it and you take it onto an 18 core Intel you find the parallel loop because there's no way that our software systems can find them automatically. That gives you another factor of eight. Uh, then you take, you lay out the memory optimization so the caches actually work correctly with a large matrix, which they typically don't. Um, that gives you another factor of 20. And finally, 
You take advantage of domain-specific hardware with Intel AVX instructions. You use the vectors, and that gives you another factor of 10 performance improvement. The final version, 62,000 times faster than the initial version. That's a lot of work to get that out of Moore's Law and hardware. Why are scripting languages getting more and more popular? Writing GUIs, for example, is a perfect fit for scripting languages because it is gluing together components. You're not writing anything performance critical. The internet was a huge boon for scripting languages. It was perfect for gluing together various components and spitting out web pages. Perl was the original language popularized for CGI scripts. And of course, we have JavaScript, which is not only the language of the web, but has grown far beyond that. And in my opinion, perhaps the biggest reason is that casual programmers come to scripting languages first and then use it for all their programming needs. A casual programmer is anyone who needs to do programming for their job, but programming is not the main point of their job. So think about financial analysts or scientists that need to aggregate data for experiments and so on. In the trailing section of the paper, the author gets into a discussion of object-oriented programming and questions the benefit that object-oriented programming has actually provided. He points out that implementation inheritance is often problematic, and by now this is a well-known flaw of object-oriented programming languages. In fact, the common wisdom now is that you should prefer composition over inheritance. The basic reason for that is that a subclass cannot be understood without knowing how all the inherited methods are implemented in its superclass. And conversely, a superclass cannot be understood without knowing how all of its subclasses are implementing its methods. This makes it really hard to understand each class in isolation. There are a couple of benefits to object-oriented programming nonetheless. The first one is encapsulation, where we combine data and code into one abstraction. And the second one is interface inheritance, where we don't inherit from concrete implementations, but define an interface that a class must satisfy. So to wrap up, scripting languages present a very different set of trade-offs compared to systems programming languages. They essentially give up execution speed and strong typing, but give you a high level of abstraction to work with, and this leads to higher programmer productivity. The author claims that at the end of the day, raising the level of programming is the most important goal for a programming language, which leads to a boost in programmer productivity. I hope you enjoyed this paper, especially when you compare it to how scripting languages and the overall programming language landscape is today compared to when this paper was written. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.